So welcome to episode 12 of What to Read This Weekend. We are your hosts. Uh, that's Rachel Green. I'm and Marie Southwell. We're both librarians in New York City. And here we are, episode 12. What's our what's our uh, episode about this week? Oh wait. Well, first, first, um, yeah, we I do what it. to read this weekend every Friday at three p.m. and we share with you a few books on a theme. They are all free to access with a public library card or with uh, some kind of login that we have through our school system. You can watch live or we'll post it on IGTV, YouTube, mm -hmm. and um, our website, which I'll put in the chat in a moment. So this week, Marie, do since do you do asked, do 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 do. we are sharing books about tearing down systemic racism, their fiction, nonfiction, and graphic novels, because today is Juneteenth. Do you want to talk about Juneteenth? You want me to talk about Juneteenth? Um, no, you can talk about Juneteenth. That's fine. So Juneteenth, um, I think Governor Cuomo just declared it. Um, a state holiday, um, but we are celebrating the date that, I um, might mess this up, um, that folks in Texas received news of the Emancipation Proclamation. So the Emancipation right. Proclamation happened in 1863, but they didn't find out until 1865. So that's the day that we celebrate. We celebrate um, their freedom. And so we wanted to share with you books about tearing down systemic racism. Um, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. I know you're thinking, how does this connect? But I promise we'll make the connection. Um, this book is anti-racist. The March graphic, knowledge, graphic novel trilogy and Genesis Begins Again. Anything else, Marie? That was before I get started. No. Um, so the first book is Miles Morales Spider Man by Jason Reynolds. And let's see about my notes. Um, this is part of the Marvel series. So Miles Morales is Spider Man. He's also um a nerdy Brooklyn teenager uh who is keeping his scholarship at a prestigious school. It's actually a boarding school um called the brooklyn visions academy and um so it it takes place in brooklyn you'll see parts of brooklyn that you probably will recognize he talks about a lot of different um places in brooklyn so i thought that was cool um and also in addition to being this nerdy teen he's also spider-man no big deal but lately he has been like receiving weird like spidey sense vibes um and it gets worse and worse in like around particular people at his school um specifically around like a, a teacher a history teacher who um it kind of like there's some systemic issue so his like spidey senses kind of like kick in there is a, a lot of build up um, but I thought it was really good. I think it's different from the movie um, and the graphic novels. This is a regular uh, fiction, YA fiction. Um, and I think Jason Reynolds has a great authentic teen voice. Um, and this deals with issues of race, injustices, prejudices, bias. Um, and he's really like fighting this like bigger thing so rather than like a specific villain so i thought it was really cool um and i was really surprised um that i liked it so much i guess although i shouldn't because i like everything that jason reynolds writes but um and you can get this book sorry on um the ebook and the audiobook are available at new york public library there is a very very short wait like days to get it at the Brooklyn Public Library. And if you don't know how to get your public library card or access the books, you should talk to your librarian or us. We can help. Next up. 
Marie. And Mike, sorry, sorry, too many <laughs> things. Um, so this is called, this book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell. And so what is this book about? This book asks and you learn to answer some big questions like, who are you? What is racism? Where does racism come from? Why does it exist? And what you can do to disrupt it. Um, they're basically 20 lessons and you're asked to examine yourself, identity, social identity, ethnicity, and um, it helps you kind of deconstruct um, what racism is and how it functions. I also like this book because you, by the end of it, you're going to find some strength. There's definitely some radicalness, love, and revolution. So you're going to be able to go out and fight some racism. Oh, and I noticed it's on sale on Amazon for $2.99 with all of the proceeds going to um, the organization Black Lives Matter and Color Me, Color Me, which I think is a British organization. Wow, that's so cool. I had no idea. I know. And then I would also wanted to say the art is very engaging, too. So it's, Yeah, I like it. Yeah. You may need a pencil and a notebook because you do have to reflect on a lot of things. It's great. So this would be a definitely like uh, something yeah. maybe you want to read rather than listen to. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would say I would rather read it than read, listen to it. But you could learn from it either way because it does talk a lot about the definitions. It gives you examples about how people have been oppressed and also how the how people have liberated themselves. So it's good. Well, All right. So the next book, um, I actually own this in my own personal library, um, is the March Trilogy. This is a graphic novel series. There are three books in the series um, and they are available through our partnership with Comics Plus Library Edition. And this is by John Lewis, who is now a, a United States Congressman um, and with help from Andrew Aiden and Nate Powell, who are um, kind of put the, Andrew Aiden helped put the words in, Nate Powell did the illustrations. The illustrations are great. They're like pen and ink and all black and white, which I really like. Um, this is nonfiction. This tells John Lewis's story. Um, like I said, he's now a Congressman, but when he was, he was about 15 um, in the 1950s when, um, when, Rosa Parks was taking her place on the bus um, when he learned about Martin Luther King. Um, and so the first book kind of talks about his early life and how he kind of became an activist. Um, the second book talks um, about like the Freedom Riders, the Birmingham church bombing and the Civil Rights Act. And book three talks about um, the freedom ballot to Selma. So I thought it was a really great way. It like, you are kind of put in the life of John Lewis. So um, as, as he's a teenager and a young adult. So I feel like it's really great for teens to understand the history, um, but also from like a young person's perspective. So highly recommend this one. And next up we have, Oh, yes, we have Genesis Begins Again by Alicia D. Williams. Um, this book won the, received a 2020 Newbery Honor, and it also won the 2020 Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for New Talent. Um, let me just say, I know a lot about self-loathing, and that is a big aspect of this novel. So one of the most radical ways you can dismantle um, the patriarchy and a racist system is to learn to love who you are, regardless of what other people tell you. So Genesis is 13 years old. She lives in Detroit. Um, she has some problems. Her father is often, has a very severe gambling addiction and an alcohol addiction. And what ends up happening is they get uh, evicted from their houses and they end up having 
all their belongings spread across and her school friends often make fun of her. And there's also a family tradition where the lighter your skin is, the more um, valuable you're seen as part of the family. And if you have very dark skin, you're made fun of. So Genesis has very, very dark skin, just like her father. Are you back, Marie? Unmute yourself. Sorry about that, people. So anyway, okay. Genesis is very dark. Her father is very dark. Her family calls her names. Uh, she goes to an extreme, some extreme measures to try to lighten her skin, which um, it, by rubbing lemons on it, she exfoliates herself once so she's raw. She bathes in bleach. But by the end of the book, she comes to um, literally love the skin she's in. And uh, I really enjoyed this book. And as Audrey Lord said, the most radical act you can have is just loving yourself. So go Genesis. <laughs> Got a little deep there. All right, next. Oh, and you can get it on Libby or Simply E, which are all through the New York, your public libraries. But there's more. We couldn't stop it for. We never um, can. We never I know. Can. I just ordered this book um, for our school library. It's called Woke. It is by Mahogany Brown with Elizabeth Acevedo and Olivia Gatwood. Um, and it's like, it's a poetry book that's fully illustrated. So like a picture book for teens, for real. Um, I love Mahogany Brown. She is a Brooklyn resident. And um, if you um, are, were in seventh grade this year, you heard from at our school, um, we had Urban Word NYC, her organization come in and do some lessons on poetry. Um, and this book is about three, the three women who contributed to this book are all women of color um, and they are poems about um, social justice, activism, discrimination, and empathy, and also joy. Um, so I'm excited to finish reading this one. I've flipped through it, but I really haven't um, uh, dove in. And there are limited copies at the Brooklyn Public Library and New York Public Library. All right. I love Dread Nation. All right. So Dread, you would have had me. All right, let me back up. I get so excited. Nobody ever wants to read this book. Um, but it is kind of an amazing construct. So there's zombie. It's a zombie thriller, but it's also alternative history. So basically what happens is we're in the middle of the Civil War and the dead start arising as zombies and um so the south never surrenders there's not like many of the wars many of the wars you see after that don't happen oh yes and there is a sequel so um the story follows so basically the book explores what would happen if there was a zombie apocalypse in the middle of the civil war it takes the um it takes the perspective of Jane, who is writing letters home to her mother. Um, basically, they figure out, they being the man, the patriarchy, figure out the way to fight the zombies is to enlist um, girls of color. So uh, African-American girls, native girls are all sort of enlisted to become zombie killers or zombie hunters. They call her shamblers in this book. And so Jane is sent to one of these academies to be trained to be a zombie killer. Um, and the book is awesome. It follows this really long arc story. The Jane is writing letters to her family home, her mother back on the plantation. Um, there's a crazy twist that maybe you will see and maybe you won't. I won't give it away. I will say that um, there is blood and gore because it is zombies. And so there's people killing zombies and zombies eating people. And there is some killing between people and people. So if that disturbs you, don't read it. But it's like a fictional view of 
institutionalized racism, white supremacy, shadism, passing, and even educational segregation. So there's like so much you could talk about in this book. And so I hope you all read it because I really love it. And there's a second one too. Literally, she cannot stop talking about it. And we were really bummed. We were really bummed that there were so few copies available, but maybe that means that it's people Check are that. really excited about it. Yeah. Um, the next book on our list is The Life of Frederick Douglass. Um, and it, you can't see it on here, but the like official title is a graphic narrative of a slave's journey from bondage to freedom, um, by David Walker, who's done a lot of stuff for comics, um, in the past. Uh, and this is a graphic novel that is about the life of Frederick Douglass, who was, a, became a very famous, um, abolitionist and voice of, um, of anti-slavery. Um, the African-American experience in slavery. Uh, yeah, so it just looks really, it looks really cool. And um, it. I think parts of this, I haven't read the whole thing, but I think that it probably should, I think there's some parts of Brooklyn that are in there. So um, we shall see. And the next book is Stamped. Which you, um, oh, I have my which you can't get anywhere unless Lord. you convince your parents to buy you the audiobook. Um, but I highly recommend it. It was a really quick read. Um, it's written by Jason Reynolds, who we all know is my favorite. Um, and he says, this is not a history book. This is about now. Um, but it is nonfiction and it does tell the story of, um, race and um systemic racism in the united states um over the last 400 plus years um but it's this is the young readers edition of the book and i would say that it is great for teens and adults all right mine is troublemaker for justice I like anything with the word troublemaker in it. So um, Troublemaker for Justice is a biography. It follows um, a lesser known for, for some, um, but, uh, Bay Bayard Rustin. I don't know why I can't get that out. Um, I think a lot of people know who Dr. Martin Luther King is and who Rosa Parks was, but he was um, a activist from not only who worked with um, Dr. Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, but also worked hard with um, underrepresented people such as the working class, labor unions, um, to gain rights. He also influenced um, Dr. Martin Luther King. His great grandmother was a Quaker and Quakers are, are part of their belief structure is to be pacifists. And so he brought a lot of the pacifist um, actions, steps to the civil rights movement. The reason Mr. Rustin is often overlooked in history and particularly during his time he was overlooked was because he was gay and as a black queer man, um, they didn't, uh, recognize his contributions to the civil rights movement. So you can read all about him in this great biography. I think he's also mentioned in the March trilogy, if I remember correctly. Um, and he kind of like, because he was gay, took a step back yeah. from like being in the front lines um, because he didn't want that it to be about that which I think is really interesting, especially in our current climate. It's still um, Ah. Oh, there we go. Um, we also wanted to shout out The Hate You Give and Just Mercy. Um, Just Mercy has a young readers edition as well. Um, and these books are free on current, or sorry, hmm, these movies are currently um streaming for free on streaming platforms um and we 
just both liked both of these books and wanted to share about them. We thought they fit the topic well. And um, I think the movies are both excellent um, as well. Slightly different than the books, but excellent. Well done. Um, audiobooks think we talk about every week. Uh, something fun is that this week, The Music of What Happens, which is a book that we featured um, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, June 5th um, is one of their free downloads for this week. So you can download this for free and read it whenever you want over the course of the next 35,000 days. I'm not joking. It really is 35,000 days. And Marie, talk about the book festival. Um, yes, it's the Juneteenth birth book festival going on right now. Um, my girl, well, she's not really my girl, but I like to call her that. L. L. McKinney, who wrote. Um, she just doesn't know she's your girl. She doesn't know that I like stalker, but in a very feministly supportive stalkery way. Um, she wrote A Blade So Black and then the second book. We've also, we also talked about those books. Um, she is doing a Juneteenth book celebration and it is like chock full of young adult authors talking about their books, talking about Juneteenth, all of the things you would possibly want today. And I think most of them are recorded and available on YouTube. So you don't have to like tune in live. Um, but if you search it on YouTube, you will find it. Um, and that's all that we have. For today you can join us next week um we will be continuing throughout the summer but we're going to take a break for one friday um july 3rd uh and so we'll have one week we'll be here next week and then we'll take a week off um and we'll be back 